Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India We continue our discussion on production of sounds, that is articulation of sounds and in this class we will see how vowels are produced. Vowels are produced without any obstruction inside the vocal tract. They are nearly always voiced and are usually produced with airflow solely through the oral cavity. So, when we are talking about consonants, we saw that consonants may be distinguished by the property of voicing, that in the production of some consonants, there is vocal fold voicing, the vocal folds vibrate and as a result gives the distinctive property of voicing. However, unlike that in vowels, we always see that they are always voiced. We can talk about voiceless vowels and what are their restrictions in the production of voiceless vowels uh, in when we talk about sounds of the world's languages, but it is almost a given that almost always the vowels are voiced. So, every language has a certain number of vowels so that they have words which contrast with each other. So, as a result in English, we can have tip and tap as two different words because the vowel, the two vowels in those two words are different. However, there may be differences in the number of vowels that are there in different languages. For instance, of some languages, it is very common in languages to have only five vowels we have given some examples here, we have Spanish, Hawaiian, Japanese, Swahili for instance, but not restricted to them. There may be many languages where we have only 5 vowels. They can be represented with the IPA symbols and uh, these are what we have, we already know them as, as Roman uh, vowels. So, a, A, E, O, U, but then they are also represented in the IPA vowel chart. We will talk very soon about that. So, these sounds, they represent words meaningfully and make them contrast. So, that is why we need uh, the most number of vowels and consonants in a language so that the words can be formed in a way that they contrast from each other. Uh, we had studied about uh, airstream mechanism in our class on consonants and we know that these are the airstream mechanisms. All vowels are produced as a result of the pulmonic airstream that is the lungs push out the air and which is modified in the vocal tract. These are not possible as airstream mechanisms in the production of vowels. How are vowels represented in phonetics? So, when we are talking about vowels, we have to talk about certain uh, representational mechanism that we use for the representation of vowels and that is called the vowel quadrangle. So, the vowel quadrangle as the name suggests, so there are two horizontal levels. This is about the shape, this is the shape of a quadrangle that we use. Note that it is neither rect rectangular nor 
uh, square, this is always measured to scale, this has to be uh, measured to a scale of 4 points, this to 3, assuming that this to 2 and they are connected and these are always at 90 degree angles. So, and then the importance of this quadrangle is that it gives us a way of representing uh, vowels. How? Because it assumes that there are certain vowels which are cardinal vowels, which are produced in these four extremes and the other vowels are then can be understood after we understand that these the quadrangle is represents the extremes of the vowel space. So, this is essentially called our vowel space and it represents the side view of the oral cavity with the face turned to the left. Now, you have to imagine this as placed inside the mouth and it is a side view with the face turned to left. So, which means it gives us the way the, the amount of space that we can utilize to produce vowels inside our vocal tract. And as a result of which you can think about this as the uppermost part of your vowel space. So, the, the top part of your vowel space and this is the back part, this is the low and this is your front of your vowel space. And then after that we can talk about rounded and unrounded vowels as to how um, they are represented in this vowel space because in this vowel space it only talks about these extremes. So, roundedness involves the lips which is outside of this vowel space. So, the quadrangle that we just talked about which gives us the extreme, the reference points for the production of four basic vowels was a system introduced in the beginning of the 20th century by the English phonetician Daniel Jones. So, the extreme points that we have are the reference points. So, what are these This is a not an exact, but a sort of a representation of what we are talking about the cardinal vowel system and the reference points. These are the reference points. So, this is the reference point for the high front vowel E, this is the reference point for the high back vowel U, this is the reference point for the high front vowel, and this is the for the low front vowel this is a reference point for the back low vowel. Now, once we have these reference points, we can talk about all the vowels that appear that occur within this vowel space. So, what does the cardinal vowel system and the vowel quadrangle do? Basically, it is trying to assume that this is the space that one has got inside the mouth to produce the vowels. And it is understood in terms of mainly two things, either the amount of narrowing that the space will provide and also the other thing which guides this is tongue height. So, for the production of each of these sounds, either the tongue is high or the tongue is low and or for the production of back vowels for instance, the amount of narrowness that is there in the back cavity of our mouth. So, these are the four vowels that we just talked about, the reference points that will give us the other vowels which is produced in different languages. So, this is the cardinal vowel system which takes into account 
four positions inside the vocal tract and however these are only the reference points and based on these reference points all the other vowels that we have in the IPA system can be then understood in terms of their tongue height and narrowing, in terms of whether it is front or back, in terms of whether it is high or low. So, these differences can be understood properly if we talk about uh, this, these reference points and how if the reference points change then we get a different quality of a vowel. But it is important to understand that this representation, this is only a representation which tries to understand what are the properties which gives the distinctive quality to the vowels that we produce. So, the cardinal vowel system has a primary set of vowels, then a secondary set of vowels and then these are always divided or you have a sets of rounded and unrounded. So, because the cardinal vowel system cannot, this is uh, represent roundedness which is a property of the lips. However, it can represent the vowel space inside the mouth to understand how much narrowness we have while we are producing a vowel and what is the tongue height. So, the tongue height for instance like in a vowel like E, the high, it is a high vowel whereas in a vowel like U which is also a high vowel, the narrowness is in the back cavity of the mouth. So, whereas these are both high vowels, one is a front vowel, one is a back vowel. Additionally, we have the property of roundedness, this is unrounded, this is a rounded vowel. And our cardinal vowel system helps us to understand exactly the, the height which we know that they are both high vowels. So, they were very close to the reference E U and that the narrowness for one is happening in the front cavity and narrowness for the other is happening in the back cavity. So, our primary vowels now are again derived from the reference points that we just had talked about. So, these are the reference points. If we add more horizontal lines, then we get the mid vowels which are found in languages. So, these mid vowels are A and O and A and O. Again, notice that depending on the height, the vowels change. So, the tongue may be a uh, position like A and A and A and E and it can be like a and o and o and u. So, for the production of all these sounds, it the back cavity has a narrowness and here it is in the front cavity. And again by introducing more lines within this cardinal vowel system, we get these 8 vowels. So, now we can understand the rounded set if we again take the same vowel quadrangle and put them in the place where you have the unrounded set. So, you have the unrounded set here and you have the rounded set here. So, these are nothing but the rounded and unrounded whereas, these are all unrounded and in the primary set the front vowels are all unrounded, the back vowels are all rounded. In the secondary set, we have the opposite of this. We have all the rounded front vowels in the secondary set and all the unrounded back vowels in this set. So, note that these are exactly the same positions with the change in roundedness. So, there, there are languages which make use of these properties. So, there are languages which differ based on an unrounded E versus a rounded E and there are languages which differ based on a back rounded U and a back unrounded U. The languages which again can make use of this difference between 
each vowel based on height as well as roundedness. So, there are languages which will differ based on height. So, there will be a higher mid vowel like a which is unrounded and then a same vowel a which will have a rounded counterpart like a u or like a o which is rounded, but it might it uh, there are languages which have a unrounded counterpart of the o and it is u. So, and the, there is a back depending on whether it is front u or back u, these are this could be all different. And there are plenty of languages which have these rounded and unrounded sets uh, and they are very often seen in languages which have roundedness, rounded harmony. So, vowels change based on the roundedness property. So, if it is a, um, if one, if there is a one rounded vowel, it can change the other following rounded vowel to become round. And then we will find that there we have the high rounded front vowel, the mid rounded front vowel and these languages offer these varieties for us to see inside the vowel space. So, now we have seen the primary set and the secondary set where the primary the front, front vowels are unrounded, the back vowels are rounded, we have the secondary set where the front vowels are rounded and the back vowels are unrounded and these are the different heights which are being exploited. These horizontal lines represent the differences in height. So, we have the extreme reference points in high vowels and then we have the slightly lower mid high vowels and the slightly lower than that mid low and then finally the low vowels. So, languages exhibit not just differences between front and back, rounded, unrounded. There are languages which have make use of this space in the middle also and which is represented with a line going and drawn along the front space of the. So, they are not very common sounds, but there's, we still have a lot of uh, the languages which have central vowels a e and u and this is the most interesting vowel in the central set which is called the schwa. So, why is a schwa important? Because a lot of languages have this as a very common sound. In English, it is very important because when a vowel is unstressed, it may reduce to a schwa. And we will find um, plenty of examples of schwa for instance, if we say alone. So, the initial vowel here is a uh, and similarly uh, many other uh, words in the language will you make use of the schwa. And then along this uh, central line that we have, we have like a, uh, this is um, uh, in English it exists as a longer version of the a uh, and then we have also a central a uh, uh, in some languages. So, here we see a bit of how the tongue moves to produce the cardinal vowel among the primary the cardinal the four cardinal vowels. So, what is the tongue height and narrowness position will be shown in these movements that you will see here. So, we have for instance a high front e and what do you see in this movement here? you see that the tongue moves up close and that narrowness is happening in the front part. So, it is not just the tongue moves up, but the narrowness is happening in the front. So, as a result we have a high front vowel. Also along with being high front, it is also an unrounded vowel. Now, let us see the other cardinal vowels. So, this is the mid back o. Again you see the tongue moves up and, uh, but it is the back cavity it is where it is moving up and it is not as high as, 
as the E. So, as you can see the E goes very close towards the front of the mouth and that is why it is a very high vowel because the movement of the tongue towards a very high position. So, unlike that if we take the mid front A, the, as you can see it is not as high as E. So, that is why it is a mid vowel, the position of the tongue is not as high as E, it is somewhat a bit lower. So, that is why E, that is why A is different from E and that is shown with the movement of the tongue here. Now, as unlike E A, let us look at A. A as if you when you produce it, you will see that your jaw goes down considerably and it gives A its quality as a low vowel. And then compare that with the production of O. Again with the production of O, the tongue, the back of the tongue goes a bit high and makes the narrowness is happening towards the back of the mouth, the back of the vowel space. Uh, however, it is going uh, towards a higher position, but not exactly the highest position and that is why O is a mid vowel. Uh, compare that to production of O and, and that of U where for the production of U this it will again go all the way back even more higher than that of O. So, that will be your position of the O, U which is going to be the highest. Let us have a look at different vowel inventories in say uh, American English vowels and uh, another English vowel inventory, British English vowels. So, uh, the vowel chart that we have been talking uh, about till now uh, is here right in front of you and you can see the front, back, high and all these um, positions in between the high and the low position. So, you have one med which moves more closer to the higher place of articulation and then you have uh, something which is low towards the lower uh, place of articulation and then you have front and back. So, if you have these then you can see E there and then the lax E and then we have E and then we have A and then we have the American English arm A and then a uh, and o, o, u and u. So, these are the uh, monophthongs as we call them because they are only one uh, unit, each of them constitute only one unit. So, when you have a movement from one place in the vowel space to another place that is called a diphthong. So, these are the monophthongs and you see that um, you can form all these words here like police, like kick and went and at and arm and bus. So, we will play these sounds to you um, spoken by a native speaker, but at the moment these are the, uh, the standard so called we had talked about, about issues concerning standardness, but uh, generally these are the most commonly occurring vowels and apart from that two central vowels a uh, and a. Uh. So, these uh, 12 vowels are, are more or less the general American English vowels. So, uh, now let us look at the British English vowels. So, when we talk about the British English vowels again we will need the vowel space that we have talked about before. So, uh, as you can see the British English vowel inventory has a few more vowels than you have in the American English vowel system. So, um, there is a reason why this happens because this is what is called the standard inventory or the BBC British English vowel inventory, but depending on the 
variety where it is spoken in the British Isles, depending on that, uh, the vowel inventory will be very different. But generally, these are the most recognized vowels and we have the high vowels and we see that we have many longer vowels in the British English system. These uh, longer vowels in the case of R like ka and bird are the result of the loss of the, uh, the rotic there which is deleted and you have a long vowel and also cord and unlike that we have T or uh, soon etc which are long vowels. So, you have E and E which is a long vowel, U and U and its counterpart these the high vowels one is a high tense long vowel the front and one is a high back long tense vowel and then we have the counterparts to the lax counterparts which are shorter E for instance is a high vowel which is front as well as unrounded just like E but it is Un, but it is not long and it is a lax vowel. Similarly, also U is a um, lax vowel, it is high and back and rounded just like U, but it is lax and it is uh, short. Similarly, we have the A and the A vowels and although we saw that the American English has a slightly lower vowel than a, a, but it, the British English vowel here is longer, there are differences depending on where this is spoken. And then we have the central vowels which is um, we have a uh and a uh, and then a uh, and then these round vowels u, u, o and then the back low vowels which are, uh, which are the ones down here as top and this one is in ka. So, let us have a look at the diphthongs. So, what are diphthongs? Diphthongs are nothing but movements from one place to towards another place in the vowel space. So, um, as a result, we have all these diphthongs in the, in the British. Um, so, let us look at them again. So, we have the first one here as you can see A moving towards E, this is a closing uh, diphthong. We have closing opening diphthongs and then centering diphthongs depending on where the movement is happening towards. If it is towards a closing position, it is a closing diphthong. Similarly, we have A and then we have I like in like, we have A as in pay, made, etc. And then we have oi as in toy we have we have um, another closing diphthong in ao as in brown and how and now etc and then we have another one like road etc o and then we have the centering diphthongs which are ear and air like care bear sometimes in some varieties they are also uh, another diphthong, u uh, uh, as in poor. So, uh, we have seen the American English vowels and here are the American English diphthongs which are um, gliding, uh, also called glides, movement from one position towards the another in the vowel space. So, we have a as in the British English diphthong you had seen before and again i as in like fine etc, oi as in toy, noise and ao as in brown, how, now etc and o as in road and these are as you can see fewer American English diphthongs unlike the British English diphthongs which were more uh, which were around 8 diphthongs, here we have around 5 diphthongs. So, um, again we are not talking about varieties, the wide variety of vowels that we find in all these varieties of the language. So, when we talk about for instance American English, so uh, very often there is a loss of length for instance in boss or as, as in English 
so where you make a distinction between caught and caught in the British English vowels uh, in the American English uh, vowels. So here like aw and aw, so that distinction may be neutralized in um, American English vowels. So again summarizing the vowels that we have seen the most common uh, English vowels as in e, u, e, e, u, o, a, 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 and and a. And then you have this ones um, which are these other ones that you have just seen, uh, the American English ones that you have just seen and also the British ones which are more in number than uh, the American. Now um, what the reason that we are going through these um, vowels is that so that we understand uh, what are the characteristics that we, we use to describe the articulation of vowels. So, uh, when we try to do that, one of the important things is to remember that what we had initially talked about when we talked about cardinal vowels, that there are two things involving vowels, that one is the narrowness in the cavity and the other is the height of the tongue. So, depending on the cavity, so we have generally a back cavity and a front cavity and also something in between which you use to produce central vowels. And uh, similarly, we have a tongue height so such that even if you have a constriction or not exactly a constriction, a narrowness created in the back cavity and a narrowness created in a front cavity, those will be the two different things distinguishing two vowels. So, let us see what we are talking about here. So, when the vowels, when you have a narrowness in the front cavity, then you have the front vowels. So, you have e, a, a, a and a and then you have the central vowels which will be produced because of the, of the narrowness in the center of the vocal tract and then you have the back vowels which is, which is because of the narrowness of the back cavity. So, essentially these vowels then are distinguished between because of the narrowness that they create in the different cavities. Now, of course, as we have studied, this is not the only characteristic of vowels, there are others as well. So, you have the tongue height, this is another property of vowels and so some vowels are high vowels, some are mid vowels and some are low vowels. So, what are the high vowels? Some high vowels are e, e, u, u as we saw from example of English. As we have talked about before uh, when we talked about the cardinal vowels and how this primary set and the secondary sets are formed, we saw that high front vowel could also have a high front rounded counterpart. As you can see, we do not have those vowels here because the vowels you are talking about here are the English vowels. They are languages which use uh, these distinctions and we will talk about those languages in another class. And you have mid vowels and then you have the low vowels produced with the tongue which is in a place which is lower than the high position and the mid position. So, this is the lowest position of tongue and with that you produce sounds like a, 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 a I and a. So, apart from that the third property of sounds is that of vowel sounds is that of rounding. So, what is rounding? Lips are rounded in a rounded position when some vowels are produced, lips are in unrounded position when some vowels are produced. So, when we see here we see the rounded vowels o, o, u, o, a and oi and then we have the unrounded vowels where which are e, e, a, 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 i. Another consideration uh, or property that we just talked about is tense versus laxness. Tense vowels are produced with more tension in the facial muscles and lax vowels are produced with lesser tension in the facial muscles. Now, so when we are asked to describe vowels, how are we going to describe them? We are going to use the characteristics that we 
just mentioned. So, what are these? Yes, yes. So, suppose the question is what is the articulatory description of the vowel sound represented by the IPA symbol E. So, what happens in the production of E? There is um, a narrowness in the front cavity, that is why it is a front vowel. The tongue position is high, it is a high vowel, it is unrounded and it is also tense because it uses a certain amount of tension in the muscles of the tongue. So, when you talk about the IPA symbol E, these are the four properties which will distinguish this vowel and this is how we describe or we give a label towards of these symbols. So, what is the articulatory description of the vowel sound represented by the IPA symbol U for instance? So, then it is a high back rounded lax vowel. So, again high because the tongue is in a higher position back because the narrowness is in the back cavity rounded as you can feel when you are pronouncing the sound it is rounded almost like oo but it is not oo because oo is tense whereas oo is lax that is the difference between these two sounds. So, if we talk about oo versus U, what is the difference? What is the difference? The difference is that in the production of this one, this is tense and this is lax. That is the only difference. Apart from that, they are both high back rounded vowels. Again, similarly, when we are talking about E versus U, the lax vowel, then what is the difference? They are both high front unrounded. However, this is the tense vowel and this is the lax vowel. And these properties should be reflected if you are talking about vowel sounds. So, similarly mid front unrounded lax vowels and then what is the articulatory description for the EPA? So, similarly when we talk about uh, these vowels and the mid vowels also, uh, we have to talk about whether it is mid, whether it is front, whether it is rounded, unrounded, whether it is lax or whether it is tense. So, concluding uh, discussion is that vowels are mostly represented with their uh, four labels among those three are the most important. You have to describe whether the uh, tongue position is high, mid or low, whether the uh, narrowness is in the back cavity or in the front cavity or whether the lips are rounded or unrounded. Apart from that, the sets of vowels which are different depending on whether the tongue is in a, in a state of tension or is it tense or is it lax. So, the, the sets of vowels which are which differ solely on that criteria and these are the ones that you see right here U versus A and U versus U and there may be other properties which we have not discussed in this lecture on vowels because those involve other properties such as uh, nasality. So, some vowels are nasal, so the languages may have nasal versus non-nasal vowel sets. Normally, those languages always have nasal harmony, which means a nasal vowel or a nasal consonant can make the surrounding vowels nasal. So, uh, that is a process of harmony or assimilation that we will not talk about here. So, the vowels can be nasal, vowels can also be voiceless, but uh, there is no known language where vowels are distinctively voiceless. Vowels are can be voiceless because of a of an environment in which they are produced and there are many languages which produce those voiceless vowels, but they are almost always determined by the environment and not distinctive vowels. So, with that we come to the end of this lecture on the articulation of vowel sounds. We will have uh, another 
discussion, a longer discussion on vowels, when we are talking about the acoustics of vowels, when you talk about vowel formants and what are the acoustic properties of uh, vowels. And uh, in that discussion, you will see what happens to these properties such as place of articulation, for instance, the place where the, the narrowness happens or how the, the tongue height, how these properties are reflected in um, acoustic properties such as vowel formants. So, uh, when we discuss those issues, you will uh, learn a lot more about vowels. Thank you.